Hello, I'm Eric Guido, and welcome to Venice in the Kitchen. So tomorrow, I'm going to be making a roast duck with perfectly crispy skin, something that isn't always that easy to achieve and intimidates a lot of people. But that's the reason we're talking about it today, because today I'm going to show you one of my tricks to getting that perfectly crispy skin on your duck while also rendering all of that amazing duck fat off of the bird and cooking it perfectly. Now, the duck fat is something that I just want to bring up really quick. What I have here is rendered duck fat from the last time I roasted a duck. This stuff is like liquid gold. When you go back and think about when you were a kid and you watched what your parents cooked with and such, my parents saved bacon fat, my parents saved duck fat. The reality is that these can be used as cooking oils and they add a massive amount of flavor to things. I can tell you right now, my wife loves to have fried eggs fried in duck fat. But achieving that is not the easiest thing. And this is what really intimidates everybody. A duck is very different than a chicken. When you get a duck, you can buy fresh or you can buy frozen. If you buy frozen, make sure you defrost it in your refrigerator fully. Give it two to three days before you decide to open it up. So we're just going to cut this open. There's gonna be a lot of liquid in here. When you see how easy this entire preparation is going to be, you'll be amazed. So what we have here is about a five and a half to six pound duck. But keep in mind, a lot of this is fat. We're gonna move this to the side. Now for today, the only thing that we're going to do is we're going to prep this for tomorrow. We're not actually gonna start making any kind of marks on the flesh or anything like that. What I will do is I'll remove the neck from the inside. Again, this is great for stock, so don't discard it. And also inside the bird, or fowl, we will find other organs as well. Heart, kidneys, liver, all of these should be kept. Especially, especially the liver. All of these items can be cooked up separately and they're extremely healthy for you. So definitely make sure you save those. As for the duck, today's preparation, the only thing we're going to do is we are going to basically let this rest in the refrigerator overnight with no cover. So if you don't know it already, what a refrigerator basically does is it has a compressor that pulls fluids and liquids out of things. So by letting this duck rest in the refrigerator, we're actually going to be drying the skin out as much as possible before starting our process tomorrow. Notice I put a paper towel down there and then I've set the duck down on a wire rack so it's plenty of oxygen airflow around the whole entire animal. From here, it's as simple as putting it into our refrigerator. Now I know it might be a little weird to bend your brain around the idea of having an uncovered piece of meat in your refrigerator. But the fact is, there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing this. It's going to be at the proper temperature up until the moment we take it out tomorrow. The only thing that this is going to do, as I mentioned, is it's going to pull as much moisture as possible out of this skin. The reality is, you can even do this for longer than 24 hours. However, for me, I feel that 24 hours is kind of the, uh, kind of the, the moment when I get the most out of the process without having the duck sitting in the refrigerator for too long. Simply place it in your refrigerator. Obviously you don't want it touching other items in the refrigerator. And that will now sit here until tomorrow when I'm ready to pull it out and start the roasting process. It's as easy as that. And tomorrow I'm gonna to show you how we're gonna take that duck and make a perfectly, perfectly crisp roast duck for our family meal. Till then. Okay guys, it's the next day and I just took this duck out of the refrigerator. It's been in there for 24 hours as we've used the refrigerator to dry the skin out as much as possible. 
And if you look at it, you can really see just how dry this skin is now. It has lost a lot of moisture. But the meat inside is completely fine. So let's bring this over here and prepare it to be roasted. There are a few things you need to do with a duck to get that perfect roasted skin, as well as to render the fat properly off of the, the, uh, the animal. If you come over here really quick, you can also see that the reason we put this paper towel here at the bottom of this tray is that a lot of the moisture came out, dripped down, and that was there just to protect it. We're just trying to keep things safe and clean. So I'm just gonna move this out of the way and bring our roasting pan over. Roasting pan should be a large gauge, stainless steel, uh, roasting pan that you use, any, any large gauge pan like this. If you have a large Dutch oven, you could use it out of the top as well. Okay, first things first, we're going to score the skin on the duck. What this is gonna do is it's gonna open up the fat underneath here and allow it to start coming out as it roasts. You wanna make sure you have a nice, sharp knife. Important though to keep in mind is that what we don't wanna do is we don't wanna cut so deep through here that we end up actually hitting the flesh. We wanna cut into the fat, through the skin, but not into the flesh. So I am literally just gonna score this. If you have a sharp knife, you don't even need to put too much pressure here. And now back across this way. I'm now going to turn it over. Let's take this out. That's just remaining from some of the parts we took out yesterday. Don't need that to be in there while it's cooking. I'm gonna tuck that in. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side now. I'm gonna score the bottom. Also, on some of the fattier parts, such as around the legs, here, we are going to literally just poke some holes here using our knife. Again, we're opening this up to allow it to render the fat perfectly. Also on the other side, it really is truly amazing how much fat is on a duck. But again, that's to our benefit. Next, I'm gonna cut off the wing tips because the reality is these wing tips will burn. As we can see, this duck must have put up a fight because he's already missing one of them. Kitchen shear, we'll take it right off. Okay, we're looking good. I am gonna cut off some of this excess, if it doesn't just come right off by itself. Fat on the inside here, this is unnecessary. Otherwise, we're looking good. Gonna poke some holes here around the leg and thigh. You'll notice that a duck has much smaller legs and thighs than a chicken does. Okay, but we want all of this. Okay, so next thing we're going to do, we are going to liberally season the inside of the duck. So here's the thing about a duck, guys. This is like your perfect roasting vessel. We're going to seal this up and we're gonna cook it at about 300 degrees for most of the cooking time. And what that's gonna do is the inside of this duck is going to become almost like its own internal steamer. And so anything that we put in here is going to cook inside and it's going to permeate the meat, okay? So first things first is we are going to season it liberally with salt on the inside. Now don't be afraid to get your hand in here just make sure it's all in there. Next, lemons. I use a whole lemon and I just quarter it. Now, I'm going to close this up. 
like so. And then we're going to truss these two legs together to seal it all up. Have some butcher's twine ready to go. Don't worry about this being a perfect seal, guys. It's still going to cook perfectly in there. Bring it nice and tight. Now, also, I was saying how this is the perfect roasting vessel. Another thing to keep in mind is that the meat inside here isn't going to overcook because it has so much insulation from the skin and the fat. Okay. The wings, look, I mean, you can, you could trust this together, but the reality is that these wings are going to cook up. They're going to be nice and crispy. You don't necessarily need to tie them. You can if you want to. Now, liberally, liberally seasoning the outside of the duck. So we made these score marks, and we want to get the salt inside of them. This skin is going to be perfectly crispy, perfectly seasoned. Don't be afraid of over-seasoning this, guys. Trust me, it will not be salty. That's nice and closed up. And then one more time on this side. Okay, we are just about ready now to go into the oven with this guy. I'm going to put it right into my pan on top of a roasting tray. Okay, this is going to start in our oven at 300 degrees, and after one hour, we're going to flip it. So let me put this into our oven really quick. I'm going to put it right into the middle of, of the oven. It's ready to go. Save my timer for one hour. In one hour, we're gonna flip this. We're gonna take it to the next level. I'll see you then. Okay, so we're about an hour into the cooking process, and I'm now gonna take the duck out of the oven to flip it. Okay, so as you can see, we are rendering a good amount of fat here, and our duck is coming along perfectly. I am going to bring our oven temperature up to 350 now. Now don't worry that this skin isn't completely cooked and crispy yet because now we're gonna flip it to work on the bottom side and it's gonna come back over one more time in the cooking process to complete the top. Just be very careful because this is hot and the entire bottom of this pan is full of duck fat. Try to center on your rack best you can. And this is ready to now go back into our oven, like I said, now at 350. So I'm going to put that in. And I'm going to set my timer for another hour. Here's the next step. Personally, I don't need to have a gravy with my duck. I'm not a huge fan of pouring orange sauces on top of duck. I love the flavor of duck, especially roasted duck like this. It's gonna be incredibly flavorful, but there are some people that really need to have that citrusy gravy on top of their duck. 
it's almost something that they just expect. And so we're gonna make a citrus gravy tonight to put with this duck, not on the duck, but with the duck. It'll be at the table for people to enjoy. We're gonna complete that gravy later, but I'm gonna show you one of the things that we should do first that's gonna help us to make a better gravy later. We're gonna make a roux. A roux is a classic French preparation that is going to naturally thicken our gravy later. I'm using equal parts of butter to flour. Now, if you were also making something like a mashed potato or something, this would also be something great to pour on top. Tonight, though, I'm actually going to make a sweet potato dish for my family. So we're letting the butter cook down a little bit. These bubbles here, this is moisture cooking out of the butter. We're over a medium to high heat right now. This is a very quick process. It's important that we do this early because we want this to cool completely by the time we start to make our gravy. Okay, we're about there. I'm going with the flour. I am whisking as I put the flour in. We are literally toasting this. There are different levels to a roux. I'm bringing the heat down a little bit. We're going for a blonde roux. We are almost there. As I said, this is a quick process. Turning my heat off. And I'm getting a spatula now. All right, this is hot butter. This is gonna keep on cooking. In fact, this blonde roux is getting a little darker than I even would usually prefer. So basically, if it gets darker, don't worry about it. The darker this gets, the less thickening power it has, but the reality is the more nutty flavor it brings to your gravies. Now, this process I'm using for citrus gravy tonight, but the reality is you can use this for any gravy you make. So anytime you roast a bird, or even if you cook something off in a saute pan, if you make a roux, let it come to room temperature, and then deglaze the pan with some kind of flavorful liquid, and then add this roux back in right at the end, you're gonna find yourself with a thick, rich gravy that you could pour over anything at the table. So like I said, our duck is now cooking at 350 for the next hour. We've made our roux. I'm gonna clean up here, and I'll see you guys when we flip it next time. Okay guys, we are just about there. Our timer's about to go off. This duck has now been cooking for three hours, and she is a beauty. Perfectly, evenly cooked, perfect roasted skin. So, I am going to let this rest, literally just by putting a piece of aluminum foil very gently over the pan. We don't want steam to build up in here. However, keep in mind that the pan is hot, heat will continue to rise, and the bird will continue to cook, but it's also gonna be resting. So it's gonna come down slowly in temperature, which is what we want. What we don't want is to plate this immediately and then have it lose all of its juices. This is gonna give us the perfect time to build our gravy. Large saute, I'm gonna start it over a medium flame. So what I have here, one whole orange, one cup of chicken stock, two teaspoons of sugar. I want it to have a sweetness, but I don't want it to be sweet. Half a cup of white wine. We have the roux that we made earlier. See how it's now solid? It's exactly what we wanna see. I have some sage leaves. I want this to basically complement the flavors of the items that we stuffed inside of the duck. Now. One thing I'm going to do just to finish off these sweet potatoes that I made is I'm going to zest some of this orange on top of here before using it for the sauce. It's going to add some nice complementary flavors. And this isn't actually done yet. This is going to be 
go in the oven for a bit. It's a family favorite. Move that back. And now, first things first, when I cut my orange up, I am going to reserve a couple slices to put on our plate, just to give it a little garnish. These will go over here for a plate. Okay. White wine first, which starts to reduce. I'll kick the heat up. That should cook quickly. We've got over a nice high flame. Now you notice that I didn't use any of the drippings from the duck. The reason for that is that we have the fat in there. That fat is incredibly hot. It's gonna keep on cooking like that for a while. In fact, I'm not even gonna touch that until after we're done eating, at which point I'm gonna take the fat and then turn it into that, that wonderful cooking uh, oil that we had created earlier, or I had shown you earlier. The process there is easy, guys. When the time does come to take the fat out of that pan, Literally run it through a chinois or run it through a cheesecloth. Just make sure it's 100% cooled. And then put it into a container and put it in your refrigerator and it'll stay for up to 30 days. It's pretty amazing. So this is a very fresh white wine I use here. As you see, like this is not like a high alcohol white or anything like that. We don't want to use something that saw too much wood. We literally just want this for the flavor and to bring a little bit of sweetness. Okay. I'm going to add my sugar to this. I'm going to whisk. Sugar's going to melt right in. Now, chicken stock. And now I'm going to juice these oranges. Notice the third arm I'm using here. <laughs> we do what we must. Okay, and that's gonna go in there as well. High heat, I'm gonna let this cook for a little bit. I am going to season it just a bit with some salt. Keep in mind, there has been no salt added. If you're making your own stock, you're gonna know how much salt is in your stock. I like to make my stock very low seasoning so that I can add the seasoning at the cooking time. So we're gonna let that go. And now, we're gonna talk really quickly about wine pairings. So, Pairing wine with roasted duck is actually extremely easy. There are the classics. One classic would be to go something like a Saint-Emilion, Bordeaux. Saint-Emilion is usually predominantly Merlot driven. And I am a huge fan of having a Merlot with a roasted duck. Uh, in fact, if you were to ask my family, it's probably the most common thing that I'll have when I have roasted duck. But you can also go Cabernet. You can go straight Bordeaux. In fact, tonight, my family is going to be having a Bordeaux blend from Washington State that is primarily Cabernet-driven, but has about 
12 to 15 percent Merlot, and also some Cab Franc. These wines go great with roasted duck. Now, I know what you're thinking. It's red wine with white meat. But the reality is you have to think of duck as being almost entirely dark meat. And that crispy skin and the fat layer that runs underneath the skin is going to add so much richness that the herbal qualities of Cabernet and the tannic qualities of Cabernet are going to shine right through, and they're going to be a perfect pairing. Like I said, Merlot is a favorite of mine. And so, therefore, another way to go, if you don't have a saint Emilion, I happen to like a lot of the Merlot blends that are coming out of northeastern Italy. Now, this one happens to be uh, uh, almost a blend entirely 50% Merlot to Cabernet. These wines are beautiful. They're also incredibly affordable. Another classic way to go, I don't have one right now, a red burgundy. A red burgundy would be great right here. We're talking Pinot Noir. So you can go red burgundy, but the reality is duck is so versatile that you could also go New World Pinot Noir. You're not stuck in France. But staying in France, another great way to go is Grenache. Chateauneuf de Pop is a perfect pairing with roasted duck. But if you want to save some money, my suggestion is to grab yourself a Côte de Rhone. Côte de Rhone you can get from most Chateauneuf de Pop producers for a fraction of the price of their Chateauneuf. However, I do have one other pairing that I love with roast duck, and it's not one that the average person would even think of. Give me one second here while I put this into our oven. Notice it's smoking in here, it's because I'm roasting up some vegetables that are going to go on our platter. This is reducing, why don't you take a look at that really quick while I grab the last wine pairing I love. So if you have any Psalm friends or people who are seriously into wine and they're always talking about the best things to pair that you'd never expect, one of my favorite pairings and theirs as well is to do champagne with fried chicken. But the reality is that champagne goes incredibly well with, yes, fried chicken, but it also goes really well with roasted duck. Go for a dry champagne. Look for something that has a good amount of acidity that'll basically cut through the fattiness of the duck. That would be perfect. Champagne is definitely an option. Now, speaking of the sauce, what if you are that person that loves that orange sauce on top of your duck? Well, a great pairing to add there, since we do have a good amount of sweetness in here from the combination of the sugar we added, the orange, as well as the wine, would we go for a nice Riesling, a cabinet, something with a little bit of residual sugar. You could even go up to spat lacing. Riesling is great because even though the sweeter ones have an actual perception of sweetness in the palate, they have so much acidity that it'll cut right through the intense, rich flavors of the duck. And that's exactly what you want. So our gravy is almost done here. We have a good amount of smoke coming out of the oven, but I was expecting that. I'm roasting these vegetables over high heat. I'm going to throw in my sage. Notice that the sage has not been cut. I'm literally looking to infuse some flavor into this. I'm not going to keep this in the final mix. Oh, it smells incredible. At this point, I'm going to take the foil off the duck. It is beautiful. I might as well also remove the butcher's tie from the legs. This is all fully cooked now, so this is not going to separate these legs are going to stay exactly in the position they're in at this point. I can guarantee you I'll be having one of these tonight. Now, otherwise, this duck is ready to go onto our serving platter. Now, I could trim it up here 
and serve it to everybody for on a, on a different plate for each of them. But I think I'm going to go family style, because reality is it's actually Easter right now in my house. And so I'd really like to have a big grand display. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the duck over. Bring my serving plate here. Turn my attention back to my sauce, which is completely ready to come off the heat. Okay, and remember I was talking about that roux. We have a hot liquid, and we have a cooled roux. Part of the thickening power of a roux comes from the fact that you are putting it into a hot liquid while it's cold. And now, we whisk. Come on, fully integrate it. Folks, that is that wonderful orange gravy that drives certain people absolutely crazy. And look at the consistency on that. Here. The idea is we want to see it coat the back of a spoon. And that is exactly what it does. We don't want to lose any of this goodness. And so I'm going to use a spatula to bring this into our gravy boat. Bring the gravy boat over the burner. It will get hot, so just be aware of that when the time comes to finally take this off the stove and put it on the table. The reality is I want to keep this warm while I finish plating the duck. That will be for the table. Let me take a look at what's going on in here. Oh, we are almost there. Okay. So our potatoes are pretty much done. Because remember, all I wanted to do was to just finish them off. Now that dark color there, that's basically your brown sugar. It has now caramelized on top of the potatoes. Almost ready with the vegetables. They need about one more minute. Okay, we're ready to start plating. So first things first, let's take our vegetables out. Here's some roasted veggies I made for our plate. As I mentioned, this is actually Easter in my home and so I always like to make very colorful vegetables on Easter for the family. The easiest way to go here would be a spatula. Now it's funny because my daughter reminded me the other day that the average person is not able to touch the food that comes out of the oven the way I am. <laughs> One thing that happens when you work in kitchens is uh, you develop uh, something of a resistance to the uh, heat of things coming out of the oven, which is not necessarily something to be proud of, but I'm mentioning it because you really should not just be using your hands on this right now. These are hot. Okay, so we have these. We have our perfectly roast crispy duck. I'm gonna put right into the middle here. Oh, God. Yes. <laughs> yes, I did. I'm gonna take those orange slices that I had. those in here. Okay. 
And then I'm going to put a few sprigs of thyme just for some garnish. Always remember, guys, you don't ever want to put a garnish on a plate that someone can't technically eat. So these have been washed and everything. I would hope no one decided to uh, eat the actual stems, though. And guys, this is ready for trimming at the table. My perfectly roasted crispy duck. I cannot wait to hear about other people trying this recipe. I'm now going to move my sweet potatoes to the table, my gravy, the duck, and I'm gonna call the kids down and start carving this up. Thank you again for joining me, everybody. Stay happy and well. Talk soon.